Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. If you are an avid VR user, you miss that sweet sense of wonder you get putting on the headset for the first time and being amazed. Well, this headset could be the answer to your desires. Let's check out the Vario Aero consumer headset. Let's get started. So I'm gonna structure this video talking about specs and my thoughts and how that translates to an experience. Then touch on the build and its quality and then some issues of course because nothing is perfect except, except maybe this. Out of the gate I have to say wow this headset is amazing and I believe I'm quoting somebody here they said this headset is like LASIK vision correcting surgery for virtual reality, turning the 480p to 4K. The Vario Aero headset will cost you 1990 euros, which is around $2,250 or 1650 pounds. So this is an expensive headset, especially when for that, you only get the headset. Controllers are to be purchased separately, including lighthouses setting you back roughly another 500 pound if you don't own that already. But still, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I haven't stopped contemplating such a purchase still. And something that Vario didn't actually advertise in their marketing, which I found interesting, people normally boast and don't deliver, they said that their PPD, the pixels per degree, which is a measurement relating to pixel density and field of view, goes up to 35, but in fact, it goes up to 39. Of course, you're gonna need a more powerful machine to achieve that, Interesting. So let's talk about specs. The display, the Aero display has a resolution of 2880 by 2720 pixels per eye because it has two mini LED displays with a higher than average brightness of 150 nits and a field of view of 115 degrees at a 12 millimeter eye relief. It's this combination of a mini LED panel and the high resolution that's created by such a small display with a high resolution, it's jaw dropping. It's amazing. The kind of difference, the kind of immersive experience you get because of this boost is mind blowing. Games like Pavlov, which isn't known for being the most stunning game, had me staring at the environment and weapons with insane clarity. And colors were also very bright and vibrant. Playing games like Beat Saber, where the environments are just this kind of trippy light show, was a treat for the eyes. These features allowed me to play games I'd played many, many times before in a new way. It gave me that sense of wonder and amazement again. And that's priceless. Well, they've obviously they've put a price on it. It's just amazing walking around games where I would have just completely ignored things previously. I was then stopping looking at every inch of the environment because it was just breathtaking. It might not have even been an incredibly detailed texture, but it was just so clear and crisp because of the, of the display. I was just in awe. The headset sadly though only has a 90 hertz refresh rate, which feels like something is missing. When a budgeted competitor, the Quest, can hit 120 hertz. When the display is as good as this, it's only let down by the smooth feeling that would have been possible with 120 plus. Although when you're playing, this isn't something that you pick up on. It's just, I know what it could have possibly been like because I've used the index before that having such an intense jump in frame rates makes such a difference to fast experiences. This headset is also rocking a spherical lenses, which is cool. It's a term which you may have come across if you own cameras, which means that they're shaped with varying curves. It's not like a complete sphere. If you were to put lenses together, it wouldn't make a sphere, which is apparently to help with aberrations, but it also means that you can have a smaller form factor. It's more lightweight which means the headset's going to be more comfortable. But sadly, the aberrations is not perfect. It can be seen in some cases, but it's nowhere near as bad as I'd seen some reviews and reports. It is nowhere near as bad, but perhaps they had released a software update since then because a software solution can fix this problem. And it was barely noticeable, but I did come across it sometimes, but I was looking for it. It's not as bad as version 37 on the Quest. An incredible feature of this headset is that it includes eye tracking capabilities, monitoring your eyes at 200 hertz, which will also automatically adjust its IPD if it's between 57 and 73 mil. Sorry, Anya. 
This eye tracking supports dynamic foveated rendering if you're able to find a game that is implemented via those SDK, which is few and far between. But luckily they provided me with an eye tracking experience and allowed me to boost my PPD due to the saved resources, which is a quickly becoming serious problem in VR. Machines are not advancing quick enough or being accessible enough to support the games that are now growing fast and demanding the power. Another painful thing about this headset is, uh, maybe I was just naive, is there's no speakers. There's no built-in speakers. The headset does not have any audio output. Although it does have an aux jack that allows you to plug a pair of headphones in. And personally for me, I do not like playing VR with headphones on because I have to be grounded in reality somewhat still. I can't get completely lost sadly because of life. There is also no built-in microphone for online gaming, but the aux does support one. So if you've got a headset that has a built-in microphone, you can still speak through it that way. Now the headset's comfort is one of my favorite things about this. The head strap design is so innovative. It's a halo strap that goes around the head, but it's split up into pieces. The lip doesn't just cover your entire forehead like the PlayStation VR or the Vive Pro. A portion of it sits on top of your head, allowing for a more breathable face and head experience. The same with the back of the head. It's also very malleable, so it has some give so it can form around the contortions of your face. The headset in total weighs 713 grams, which may widen your eyes like that's heavy, but due to its design, its distribution of weight, as it's far more usable than the Quest 2, which is way lighter. It even gives you an amazing twisty knob control over the top of the head, the back of the head, and can change the angle of the support as well on the side of the head. It even has a built-in counterweight at the back of the headset, which actually counts for around 200 grams of their headset's weight to begin with. Which brings me onto the thing that is maybe the most frustrating thing about this headset. The headset has warping at the very edge of your vision, which if you're looking dead ahead, you don't really notice it. But when your eyes wander and look around whilst moving your headset, you can catch it. And once you found it, it just kind of made me feel uneasy when I was focusing on it and looking around. It actually made me feel a bit motion sick. It like stretches the image slightly before it leaves or comes into your vision. And it's such a shame because the display experience is fantastic. So this headset connects to the computer via a display board and a USB 3.0, which goes to this small unit. And then the headset plugs in via USB-C to this unit, which means you need three additional plugs to enjoy this headset. One for each lighthouse and one for the headset. But I do find it interesting that it's using a USB-C. Are we getting to that point now? Because I, I was laughing at the fact that the Quest was using USB-C before. And even the PlayStation VR is going to be using USB-C, but it... The clarity I'm getting from this and the fact that it's using a USB-C cable, you know, I'm, I'm changing my tune. The Vario headset is independent of the Oculus and Steam platforms. It requires the Vario base software. And in this, you can calibrate the eye tracking, change your home environment, adjust system settings, increase the quality. But what I noticed is when you boot this up, it would also boot up either Steam VR or Oculus VR, depending on which one you have set your OpenXR default to. And guilty, I spent really, really long just looking at my eyes wandering around inside the headset. It was, it was quite fun. Now the build quality, because you want this to be a premium product and some areas feel super premium, like the facial insert and the cushion pads, they have this matted feeling, but it's a synthetic leather. It's not a real leather, but it feels really, really nice. It then has a fabric over the midsection and then a hard plastic front, which feels a bit like the index. So I believe there are sensors in the front panel. So that's why you have this kind of thin, cheapier plastic at the very, very front. It also has two buttons on the side of the headset that allow you to access a quick menu so you can have quick actions like returning to the menu so you can access other features or recalibrating your eyes or a click of a button away. So although this headset has some sad flaws, it's defining features, it's redeeming features, keep me wanting to revisit this headset. And I was playing this with Vive Wands and I hate Vive Wands and I still wanted to use this headset. The clarity of the display allowed me to experience another level of immersion. And now I've got to go back to the quest. The headset allows for more granular control and what I've seen in life is if you want finer, more granular control over something, it's going to cost you more money. I don't think you're gonna have a bad gaming experience with this headset at all, but you may be thinking something equivalent could be coming out round the corner and cheaper because we're due a new generation of PC VR and of course, PlayStation VR. But when is that going to be? The Vario Aero is gonna have a place in my heart with fond memories, mostly because of that screen. 
that screen. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching to the end of the video, getting caught up in the latest and greatest in the virtual reality space. Please subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I will see you next time. Happy gaming. Good day.